Hello friends, it's Luke the Gamer Duke. Recently in a prior video, I grinded through several Nightmare Talrasha tombs with Enhanced Magic Find, ending with Duriel. He dropped what I thought on initial sight was an awesome find. Spell Steel, the unique bearded axe, which includes great enhanced damage, great casting affixes, and four added skills, notably Decrepify and Teleport. I really want to put this thing to the test. Does Spell Steel, skills and affixes realistically function as intended? Let's find out. So here it is, Spell Steel. The base attack doesn't seem too bad, 127 to 294. Something cool about built-in item skills is they take on the synergies of your current skills. So Firestorm here is doing 217 to 251, or normally at this level it would do a measly 51 to 59. Holy Bolt as is does 84 to 94. Decrepify, which slows, weakens, and amplifies damages targets by 50%, and Teleport, which should be self-explanatory. I'll keep Fissure on just in case things get hairy. I figured a good place for some initial testing is Nightmare Tower and the Marsh area. And the attack damage is straightforward, it does what it does. It's fair, nothing grand, but in the hands of multi-hit attacks like Whirlwind, Zeal, or Fury if this was a Shifter Druid, it might do some chopping. Firestorm and Holy Bolt are largely useless, however. The damage simply isn't there. Firestorm's a bit better here with synergies. And by throwing a mix at this Night Clan mob, I'm getting through them. But if the point is to add these as new skills to your arsenal in an effective manner as they are, they fail miserably. To test how lucrative teleport is with 20 charges, I ran 10 runs without teleport using the old travel to the left technique to get an average run time which was about 2 minutes and 15 seconds per run. And when using teleport, first off you are not sorceressing your way through here. Unless you get lucky, you will run out of most if not all of your charges before you reach level 5. But in using it sparingly, like across walls or to bypass enemy encounters, it came in pretty handy. On the flip side, there were a few times it almost got me massacred. But in using it selectively, I averaged about 1 minute and 25 seconds per run, saving almost a full minute. One run was actually completed in under a minute. Though I did need to recharge about every 3 runs, so it can become taxing. And what about Decrepify? Adding this curse to any character skill set is surely useful, and it certainly can be. But there is a cost. Which brings me to the crux of these skills. They are expensive. Holy Bolt and Firestorm are on the cheaper side, being they're basically useless, and will run you per cast 552 for Holy Bolt and 596 for Firestorm, needing over 55 and 35,000 for full charges. Teleport is great, but teleport is costly. You are running at 3,584 per Vanish, leaving a full recharge to set you back over 71,000 gold. Decrepify, though, will take an arm. Each time you cast it, it will cost you 4,292 gold, needing nearly 130k for a full recharge. And just in case you blast through the entire thing, you'll be set back 291,488 gold. What? What the f- Or an ort and a chip but you better have a stockpile. As a final annoyance for the skills, each time you exit and log back into your character, you have to reassign the skills to your bindings. Apparently this is a glitch, but a current workaround is to save and exit with your swapped weapon, and it will save your bindings. So, Holy Bolt and Firestorm are basically useless, and Teleport and Decrep are expensive as hell to use on a grinding basis. But I want to try one more quick case study focusing on its actual affixes. I jumped my level 36 Paladin to 39, and with his, let's say less than meta build, might be able to take better advantage of them. In comparing the zeal damage to something a bit lower grade like the Scepter from half a Millabraga set, the damage is certainly better. And notice Holy Bolt is now doing 378 to 423 with the added synergies. 
I'm sticking this red line on my mana orb, so anytime my mana reaches it, we can see where I would have run out without the plus 100. And straight away, we can see attacking enemies with multi-hit skills is much more effective. Granted, there are some misses with my lack of dexterity, but for the most part, I'm chopping down enemies fairly well. I used Fist of the Heavens fairly liberally, and in going through with Millibraga Scepter, I needed 13 mana potions in all. And in running the same run with Spell Steel, I only needed 6. The 25% regen boosted my mana back up pretty quickly between engagements. Even in taking it into the catacombs, the damage still holds up. Decrep and Teleport came in handy when using it selectively, but eventually reached Indariel, and standing toe-to-toe -to -toe was not ideal. So I ran circles instead, where the extra mana and regen paid off. The few times I jumped in, I threw a Decrepify on her, and suffice to say, damage was being dealt, though I wouldn't say extensively. Taking this thing into the start of Act 2, though, it began to show its true self. The weapon damage is still decent, but the normal attack speed is hindering me here against quicker mobs. Getting into the Halls of the Dead and being able to use Holy Bolt and Fist of Heavens proved the 100 mana and regen were still quite resourceful. I can essentially sit here and blast off bolts indefinitely. And after an engagement, mana recovery is definitely still noticeable. But again, in dealing with creatures instead of demons or undead, or even when it might become required to swing it in general, its overall damage output starts to fall behind. Decrepify saved my ass versus these spear cats on more than one occasion by slowing them and taking increased damage, but I began to realize that it was essentially a necessity for proper damage to be dealt rather than a bonus to chop through at an accelerated rate. It's a unique bearded axe. I should be hacking them apart, especially at the start of Act 2. What really drove the point home for me though was testing Spellsteel against its likely peers. In comparing to other attackers, the lack of added melee affixes becomes glaring. Bone Snap's damage isn't that much higher, but the 40% crushing blow makes it so. Anytime I needed to melee the spear cats or just mop up, it was never a problem. A mob runs up, smash, dead. Witcher's Pupil was the same. Comparable damage, but the attack speed and open wounds and deadly strike means that each attack deals so much more than simply the damage alone. I didn't even need a shield. Even Cold Steel Eye, the exceptional version of a scimitar, with half as much damage eats everything in its way with the added cold damage and crazy attack speed. Even misses with these weapons matter little because the damage or attack speed more than makes up for it. But with spell steel, I was getting interrupted often and wasn't doing the damage to keep up. Sure, I needed to use a few more mana potions, but at this point the difference was only a factor of 3 or 4, and it's not like you won't find more laying around. Just the general confidence I had in going through with the other weapons was noticeably higher. If given the choice between spell steel and any of these to finish Act 2 with, Spell steel for me would likely be toward the bottom. So, what do we think of spell steel? I'm honestly a bit more on the fence here than I thought I would be. Some attributes were great, and others not so much. The skills were opposite extremes. Holy Bolt and Firestorm are right out. But Teleport and Decrepify are great skills, there's no way around that. But the limited charges nukes teleports potential dramatically. And even so, grinding sessions will add up quickly. Or you better have orts and chips ready to burn through. Decrep's repair is even more, and its lower level reflects its duration, so serious usage will drain it quickly. The affixes were better acclimated. Caster rate and damage reduction are always a bonus. Caster rate could be better though. The enhanced damage percent is solid, Though without any added elemental, open wounds, critical strike, etc., the realistic damage output does not go very far. I would have likely had an increasingly difficult time in melee as Act 2 went on, and there's no way this is performing against Duriel, let alone getting you through Act 3. Plus 100 mana and mana regen were absolutely great and made realistic differences, 
On several occasions, I would have needed potions to continue battle, but potions aren't exactly a scarce resource. I think the lack of overall damage output and costly skills overshadow the mana perks that a mana-heavy melee character might benefit from in sacrificing added character skills or other affixes from other weapons, and potentially even a shield, losing more affixes. At the level you would be at, as a hybrid of some kind, you would likely have enough mana for a potion or two to cover you when needed. I would say Spellsteel might be best suited as maybe an offhander for use of the skills or mana bonuses in sticky situations. But as a primary, unless you have some normal rare two-hander lesser item and none of the affixes are helping and really need mana and you have tons of orts and chips or cash money records to cover the skills needed to help you because you can't swing fast enough, I think my final conclusion is Spellsteel simply doesn't cut it. It's good at a few things but not really great at anything. It doesn't know what it wants to be, nor who it wants to be for. Which is unfortunate, because I really wanted to like it. Oh well. Yeet it! But feel free to let me know your thoughts in the comments. Did I completely shit the bed with this thing, or are you just as lost with it as I am? If you enjoyed this run through, consider hitting that like button. I want to give a quick shout out and thank you to everybody who has subscribed so far. As of this video, over 100 of you have, and it has been a huge inspiration to continue making these. I'd also like to spawn this video into additional item testing, so if you haven't, remember to subscribe as I'm working toward more fun Diablo, ARPG, and other gameplay analytics. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Adios!